Welcome back to Life on Two Wheels. I'm going to try and keep this as succinct as possible. It's springtime and uh, it was high time to get our bikes uh, ready for, our Brompton bikes ready for a summer of uh, tootling around uh, Toronto on some of the uh, really, really nice bike trails along Lake Ontario, up and down the Don River, uh, yada, yada, yada. So our bikes, Susan's bike and my bike, they're identical, ordered at the same time. And uh, when you order a Brompton, there are a ton of choices that you have to make. Well, maybe not a ton, but certainly uh, dozens and possibly uh, in the hundreds. And that's because Bromptons are highly customizable. So you can have um, different heights of uh, handlebars, different lengths of seat posts, telescopic seat posts, a rack, no rack, fenders, no fenders, um, uh, certain components, uh, lighter components, and so on. Uh, there are a lot of decisions to make. And one of the decisions you need to make, as I, as I said, is whether you're going to need a rack or not. And in my case, I knew I wanted a rack. And the reason I wanted a rack has nothing to do with uh, uh, carrying stuff, which would be the normal thing. So there are two reasons to uh, decide to have a rack or not to have a rack. One of them is obvious. And then the other reason is not really so obvious. So in my case, I had this um, hidden reason or non-obvious reason for wanting a rack. And I'm going to save that for the end of the video. Um, and Susan didn't have any of these considerations. She wasn't planning to uh, carry stuff. We're not going to do any bike packing or anything. So uh, uh, we didn't order her bike with a rack. And we ordered my bike with a rack for that reason you're only going to find out about later. It turns out that there are two reasons that you might want a rack on your Brompton. One is to make it easier to move stuff on your Brompton. And then the other, which is not obvious, is to move your Brompton on stuff. So move stuff on your Brompton, need a rack. Move your Brompton on stuff, need a rack as well. What do I mean by moving your Brompton on stuff? What I mean is that the Brompton has two modes. One is the cycling mode when the bike is unfolded and you're in the saddle and you're having a great time. And then the other mode is when you folded the bike because you're going into a building, um, it could be you know going into a museum or restaurant or whatever, and the bike needs to be folded. And so uh, it needs to have a way of moving easily. When the bike is folded, it sits on these small wheels. And the ones that come stock with the uh, Brompton make it um, easy-ish to move the uh, Brompton, to roll the Brompton over a very short distance. So if you've got it in the middle of uh, the floor of your office and you're trying to roll it under your desk, the wheels are going to help. But when you're trying to roll it over uh, longer uh, distances, uh, the stock wheels really uh, are not that helpful. And I found that out once we ha got delivery of our bikes. And so the first thing I did was order uh, Brompton Easy Wheels, which are uh, a wider diameter. They come with bearings and uh, they make a huge, huge difference uh, when you have a rack. When you don't have a rack, uh, walking the bike just with two, two, the two Easy Wheels that you can install on the bike is better than with the stock wheels, but it's still not ideal. So one of the reasons you need to have a rack is when to make it easier to roll the bike over a much longer distance in a subway, underground, um, shopping malls, restaurants, museums, and so on. Airports. Don't forget airports. We got our bikes from Curbside Cycle. You know this because I've discussed it on a number of occasions. And I have had just an incredible time with uh, Curbside Cycle. They've been extremely responsive, very, very uh, diligent in terms of uh, keeping us uh, posted on um, on when we would be receiving our bikes, helping us place the order for our bicycles so that uh, we we got them the way we needed them and so on. And with the exception of the rack, that was just absolutely phenomenal. It continued to be phenomenal because when I realized, oh, we needed a rack for Susan's bike, Tim at Curbside Cycle was uh, an absolute angel and he allowed me to order that rack uh, aftermarket for the same price as it would have cost had we included it in the original order from the factory. That was absolutely amazing. I picked up the rack um, and an additional pair of Easy Wheels for uh, Brompton Easy Wheels for Susan's uh, bike for the rack portion. Uh, brought them home and I turned my office into a 
uh, an impromptu uh, mechanical workshop. Uh, I'm not going to show you how I went about installing the rack. There's no video of my disassembly, reassembly, installation on Susan's Brompton. Why? Because I don't consider myself to be, by any stretch of the imagination, an able Brompton mechanic and there are uh, much better sources for that kind of information. So one excellent source are the instructions that you get when you order any part from Brompton. Uh, they're succinct, they're not fancy, they're black and white, uh, but they give you all the information that you need in order to assemble uh, what you're looking for. Uh, and in the event that you need more hand-holding, and I certainly needed more hand-holding, there are phenomenal videos. Now, the interesting thing about uh, two sources of these videos, uh, which is uh, perhaps a little bit counterintuitive, but shouldn't be, is that um, both in terms of uh, professional and amateur uh, Brompton mechanics, they are women. And so the professional Brompton mechanic is Hannah of Brilliant Bikes. And the amateur uh, Brompton mechanic is Christine of Chris by Bike. And there are links to those videos below. And uh, what you need to know, uh, particularly in terms of, let's say when you're reassembling, reassembling a Brompton, because you have to remove, you have to deflate, remove the tire, disconnect the, uh, the hub gearing, uh, and then on, once you've installed the rack and you've made the changes you need to make, including changing the mudguard, uh, because the rack mudguard and the standard mudguard are a slightly different design, um, you reassemble, you've got to reinflate, and you've got to adjust the hub gears. And so uh, both Hannah and, uh, and Chris have excellent videos in that regard. In terms of the installation of the rack, I relied on Jani's uh, video on rack installation, and there's a link to that below. Um, Jani's uh, how-to uh, videos are also very, very well done. Very, very simple, straight to the point, uh, and provide excellent information for, uh, in this case, installing uh, or removing and installing a rack on, uh, on a Brompton. So I had everything I need to know, and now you have everything you need to know if you want to uh, or if you need to uh, install a rack on a Brompton, uh, remove a rear wheel, reinstall a rear wheel, adjust the hub gears, yada, yada, yada. One of the things I needed to do in order to carry out the installation was stabilize the bike in an unfolded standing position. I don't have a side stand on our Bromptons, on Susan's Brompton, well, either on mine. And so what I did is I, I got a little bit creative and I used something called a walk stool. I have this uh, collapsible three-legged stool uh, that I bought so I could uh, bring it along on uh, both the Vespa rides and Brompton rides if I wanted to, let's say, uh, sit in a location and uh, while, while either I was filming a time-lapse video or uh, doing B-roll or something like that, or, or just kind of sitting around and uh, enjoying a coffee and watching the world go by. Uh, that walk stool, if you uh, extend only two of the legs and retract one leg, uh, you can use it as a kind of a crutch for the uh, Brompton by putting the crossbar of the Brompton uh, onto the saddle of the of the, the walk stool, and it you just lean the bike a little bit, and you've got a, a nice stable. Uh, unfolded standing platform for the bike. I didn't drop the bike once. It worked out really, really well. I can't say enough good things. Uh, the other thing I did in, in my office, you know, to uh, set it up was to put the uh, tarp, the, the ground tarp from my uh, camping tent on, to, on the floor to protect my carpet. And, uh, and the rest is history. The, the, in terms of tools I used, uh, you'll see that there's a variety of tools, but uh, in particular, uh, most of the work was done with the Brompton, uh, the amazing Brompton toolkit. And so that was all I needed really to, uh, to do the work. And now it's time to share the secret what was that second reason that I needed a rack for my, or I knew I needed a rack for my Brompton, whereas I was positive that Susan didn't need a rack? And the answer is that I wanted to have the possibility of taking my Brompton on my Vespa. And I needed that to serve as a stable surface when the Brompton is sitting on the back of the, uh, on the pillion seat or the passenger seat of the Vespa. And how do I secure it on the Vespa? I secure it with something called a, a rock strap, which is like the go-to 
a tie-down device for motorcyclists and scooter riders. So it's a kind of a combination of a, a click-together web, uh, web strap and a, a, a wide, flat, a relatively wide, flat, very, very strong bungee. So when you uh, you snap the strap in and you pull it, you you pull it tight. Uh, that that bungee uh, provides resistance. And so the strap never never loosens, never comes undone. The thing is held securely. So with two rock straps, uh, I've managed to secure the um, the Brompton to the Vespa. I did a little uh, practice run in the garage, and everything is uh, super stable. And so that's my new uh, go-to uh, adventure duo: Vespa meets Brompton, Brompton meets Vespa. Happy camper. So that's it for this uh, episode of Life on Two Wheels and The Fold. So now you know if you're ordering a Brompton, my recommendation is get it with a rack even if you're not planning to carry any stuff on your Brompton because you're going to need to uh, need that rack to make it easier to carry the Brompton or roll the Brompton over stuff. Uh, there are other episodes coming up. Uh, one of them is going to be a hack, a really, really interesting hack. I put a lot of thought into it. Uh, the challenge was how do I carry uh, a GoPro along when I'm riding, whether on the Vespa or on the Brompton, and make it easy, let's say, to take a, a point of view shot by mounting the GoPro on my chest. Or if I need to, let's say, if I'm riding by something and it's really impressive, I've noticed in a lot of biking videos, um, what happens is uh, people will say, oh, wow, look at that. That's an amazing scene. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, but they've got their GoPro in a chest, in a chest harness. And so uh, short of stopping and turning their body and so on, they can't show you this amazing thing that they've seen. And to be honest, it's a little bit frustrating. So I've come up with a hack that allows you uh, in an instant to uh, grab the camera and, and really focus it anywhere. Uh, you know, to your left, to your right, behind you, and so on, capture fellow riders, and then uh, put it back on your chest, and uh, or, or put it on your waist so that it's out of the way, uh, all seamlessly and without driving your Brompton into a tree or off a cliff. And the other video that's coming up, I'm calling a high pressure pump hack. And um, I'm not the first person to come up with this hack. Uh, I discovered it from somebody else. It gives me peace of mind because I know wherever Susan and I go riding our Bromptons, I'll be able to pump the tires up to uh, uh, the recommended uh, tire pressure uh, from curbside cycle. Their uh, head mechanic uh, impressed upon me that uh, 80 pounds per square inch, 80 PSI is the appropriate uh, uh, pressure, tire pressure for our Brompton bikes. So that's it. Don't forget to go to the blog. So you'll see the touring guide, the gear guide, and a lot more. And as more and more Brompton uh, content uh, gets created here, I'll be adding links to that as well. So take good care. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time on Life on Two Wheels.